In this video, we're going to have a look at how to tackle trigonometry questions that involve bearings. Now, as you know, bearings are just taken uh, from the north, and we are talking of three-figure bearings. So what we've got is, it's important that you draw a north line, and that you take your bearing clockwise from the north accordingly. Okay, so let's look at a few examples, and we'll work through them. So you're told that a ship sails from Harbour H on a bearing of 84 degrees for uh, 340 kilometres until it reaches point P. It then sails on a bearing of 210 degrees for 160 kilometres until it reaches point Q. Now there are two parts to the question. We're going to look at the first part here on this slide and then we'll look at the second part later on. So we're asked to find the distance between point Q and the harbour. In other words, we're asked to find this distance here, okay, from point Q to the harbour. So that's what we're looking for. So let's call that X, okay, seeing as we're looking for um, that distance, okay. Now, when you are doing any bearings question with trigonometry, the most important thing is to make sure that you include north lines. Now, they're partially drawn for us here. I would like you to make sure that you extend them down the way as well. Okay, and you'll see why that's important uh, in a wee while because we're going to make use of alternate angles and having extended north lines can be really helpful to see what exactly is going on. Okay, now we're asked to find the distance between uh, point Q and point X. Then. Okay, now let's see what we know. Well, if you have a look at this, you know that from there to there is going to be 180. Now, if all the way around is 210, then this little angle here must be 30, okay? So that must be 30 in there. And what else do we know? Well, we know that using the alternate angles, so Z angles, if you like, we know that if that's 84, we know that this must be 84. Now, if that's 30 already, and the blue angle is 84, What's in here, which will maybe show green, must be 54, okay? So the Z angle there tells us that the whole thing must be 84, and because we know already that's 30, then this little angle here must be 54, okay? So if we put in that that is 54, what do we have? We've got now got our angle sandwich. We've got uh, two sides and we've got the angle in between. So we're going to use these three bits of information to find x. And we're going to do that using the cosine rule. So we'll start off and say that x squared is equal to 340 squared plus 160 squared minus 2bc cos a. So we'll put all of this in brackets. 2 times 340 times 160 times cos of the angle, which is 54. We work that out so that uh, x squared is 77,248 uh, it is, 248.96. And remember to square root your answer because we're wanting x, and x itself is going to be the square root of that, which works out to one decimal place as 277.9 kilometers. Okay. Now, that, it's always good to check that your answer makes sense, and that looks entirely in proportion to the rest of the question, okay, and the dimensions it would give. Now, if we look at the second part of the question, okay, we're asked to work out what bearing must the ship sail uh, to return directly to the harbour from Q. Now, we know that this distance is 277.9, okay, 277.9 kilometres. So first of all, what are we asked to find? We're asked to work out on what bearing the ship has to sail, has to take to return to the harbour from Q. So in other words, we want to work out this uh, this angle here. Okay, we wanted to work out what this bearing is. Now we know already, as we mentioned, that because this here is 30, we know because these north lines are parallel that this must be 30. Okay. Now, what I would like to do is, I want to see if we can if we can work anything else out. 
Now, uh, what do we have and what do we know? Well, we know that this is 30, as we mentioned, okay? And we know from uh, using alternate angles, so I use a different color, that might be more helpful. So we know that if that's 54, we've already worked out that, if that's 84, sorry, we've already worked out that that's 54 as well. So if I put in all the information I know from having done part A, let's see what I've got. Now, I've got an angle and its opposite side, and I've got this other side. So I can use a sine rule to work out what this angle is, okay? So if I want to find this blue angle, I've got one pair of opposites there, and the question will involve another pair of opposites. So I can use the sign rule to find this blue angle. And if I remember to take a 30 away from it, that will then allow me to work out this angle here. And that angle is going to be very helpful if I have to work out the bearing from this point all the way around. That will take me to H. Okay, so let's see how we get on with the sign rule. So, the sign rule then. Let's call this angle here, uh, the blue one, let's just call it Y, okay? Let's call it Y. Now, uh, 340 over sine Y, that's one pair of opposites, that has to be equal to 277.9 over sine 54. Okay? Now, if we uh, get everything onto one level, we can see that 277.9 times sine y, that has to be equal to 340 times sine 54. And to get that, all I'm doing is cross multiplication. Okay, we're seeing that the product, uh, the diagonal products are equal. So that has to be equal to that. Now, if I want to get sine y on its own, I divide everything by 277. 0.9, and if I do that, and then do inverse sine, I find that angle Y is 82 degrees to the nearest degree. Okay, now that is not my final answer. Okay, because what I've just found here is the blue angle. So the green angle is going to be, obviously the 30 has to be taken away from 82. So this angle in here, okay, this angle in here, it's going to be not 82, but 52, because 52 and 30 make 82. Now, the bearing is taken clockwise from the north, so all the way around is 360. Now, we're not going all the way around, we're stopping 52 degrees short of that. So the answer to the question, the bearing is going to be 360 minus 52. So the answer is going to be... 308 degrees. That's your three-figure bearing. Okay. Now, here's your third example, or a third question that you can try, uh, or a, a second question, I should say. Um, we've got two forest lookout towers this time, and we've got a forest fire. Now, in this diagram, you are just given the very bare bones. You're not the diagram isn't annotated or anything, so you have to put the information on yourself. So make sure that you read the question carefully. Now, A is five kilometers from B, okay? So we'll write that on. And it's on a bearing of 220 degrees from B. Now, before I do anything else, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw north lines, and I'm going to extend them down the way, and that might help us when it comes to alternate angles and see how things are going to work out for us. Okay, so all the way around from here to here is 220 degrees. Okay, so I'll write that that's 220 degrees. Now a forest fire is sighted at F on a bearing of 70 degrees from A. So 70 degrees from A, this whole thing is 70 degrees. And, the, and uh, we're told that it's uh, on a bearing of 150 degrees from B. So if I use, uh, let's just use black. So from here to here is 150 degrees, okay? Now, because we know that from north to south is 180, 
we know that this little angle in here has to be 30. Okay, so we know that has to be 30. So let's see what we're asked to find. We're asked to find, work out what the distance uh, traveled by the helicopter is to go from A to F. So let's just call it X. That's what we want to find out. Okay, now because we know that all the way around here is 220 and we know that from north to south is 180 then this must be 40 degrees okay and because we know that this these two north lines are parallel okay i can take uh, a z angle down like that and i know that if that's 40 this must be 40 and because the whole thing is 70 if that's 40 this must be 30. So I can break this up into 40 and 30. Okay. So we know that in this triangle, the main things that we need to kind of pay attention to are this angle here is 30. Okay. We have to know that this angle here is 70. Okay. And because we are having to find uh, this side out. Um, we know that these two uh, angles along with this one have to make 180. So that's 70 and 30, that makes 100. So this must be 80. And now that I've got that, okay, so now that I know that this angle here is 70 and I know that I have a pair of opposites there, I can use the sign rule, okay? So we've got a pair of opposites there and there's another pair of opposites. So this question, if you ignore all the other clutter uh, that's going on, involves two pairs of opposites and we would do the, use the sine rule to work out the distance. So we're going to start off by saying x over sine of the opposite angle, which is 70. That's got to be equal to 5 over sine 80. Okay, now using uh, cross multiplication we end up with x sine 80 equals 5 sine 70. And if we divide everything by sine 80, we'll end up then with x. And we can work out that x is 4.8 kilometers. So it's all about getting the right start. Okay, it's all about getting the right start and doing your north lines is half the battle and looking out for alternate angles. Okay, here's your third and final example. So if you want to try this one yourselves, uh, go for it, pause the video, see how you get on and then you can check back uh, and see if you got it right. Okay, now this time our sketch is not really very helpful as such in that we're going to have to do our own sketch um, and that's what you would have to do anyway so don't worry about all the extra uh, details just focus on the triangle itself so if i'm going to draw this triangle um, we're going to we've been asked to find the distance from p to r so we'll just draw the triangle as it is and i'm going to draw three north lines at each of the three corners. Okay. Now, let's focus on what we've been given and focus on what we've been asked to find. We know that's 85. We know that's 60. We know that we have been asked to find this here. Now, let's have a wee look and see. So the guy was walking along like this and he takes a bearing of 215 uh, down like this. Okay. So from the north all the way around to there, we know that's 215, okay? And you're then told that it's on a bearing of 290 that he then heads up this way, okay? So let's see if we can find out what we have to do, okay? Now, because this is 215 and we know that from north to south is 180, this must be here, this must be 35. Okay, so this angle in here must be 35 degrees. Okay, and because we know that that's a Z angle, this must be 35 as well. 
So we'll put that in. Okay. So this has to be 35 degrees as well. Now, if from north to south again is 290, then sorry, from north to south is 180, but all the way around until we hit this line is 290. This angle here must be 110 because 180 plus 110 will give us 290. So if that there is 110, and we know from north to south is 180, all together we've got 290, then we can work out that this here is going to be 70, okay? Because 70 plus 290, in fact, we don't even need to bother with this. I'll just get rid of this because it's not necessary, okay? So we know that, um, so I'll just show that that's 35 there. So you look at the red angle there, it's 290, and 290, that bearing, plus 70, has to make 360. So that's why it has to be 70. So if we look at our triangle, okay, the angle we're going to really focus on is 105, okay? So we've got a triangle, okay? If we just, sometimes it's helpful just after you've done your initial sketch to do a final sketch. This doesn't have to be a work of art, just something with the main details. That's the side you're looking for. I know that that's 105. Okay, I know that that's 60, and I know that that's 85. So we've got our angle sandwich, and that is the conditions for the cosine rule. So we just then use the cosine rule. Okay, so using the alternate angles and your north lines, we found out that that was 105, and we can then say that x squared equals 85 squared plus 60 squared minus 2bc cos a, so 2 times 85 times 60 times cos of 105. Remember to put the 2bc cos a uh, in brackets on your calculator. You work out that x squared is 13,464. 0.95 and we're going to work out by square rooting that that x is 116 meters to the nearest meter okay so i hope that was helpful all you really have to do to get the right answer is to do a decent sketch and to know that your bearings are taken clockwise from the north draw extended north lines at every point of direction so at every corner of your triangle and look out for alternate angles and you should be able to do these questions okay so i hope that was helpful